Now comes my favorite part, weapons and how to use them. Don't worry about that red contract over in the distance. It's a decommissioned frigate that's been tugged out here for target practice. Before we get to weapons, we need to learn about the tactical view. You can switch between tactical and normal views by pressing spacebar. The view controls here are the same as before, but you can zoom out much further and get a better idea of the situation in the battle space. Take a moment to look around now. The tactical view provides you with a lot of information that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. It's your primary way of knowing what's happening around you. You'll be using it a lot. The range plane shows you both elevation of targets and their distance from a given point. When no ships are selected, it sits at the center of the battle space. Select the small beginnings now to see how the plane changes. Orders. Take note that the range plane moved to center on that ship. It'll also track with it. All ranges will be indicated relative to your currently selected ship. Notice that the line from the enemy track to the range plane has a slight curve. This is because elevation and range are not directly related, so the contact's distance on the plane must be projected onto a sphere. This layout makes it easy to determine the range of a target by looking at the position of the plane relative to your selected ship's capabilities. The dotted lines represent maximum ranges of your ship's systems. Red indicates offensive range, blue is sensor range, and defensive systems are green. While there are common ship configurations found throughout the fleet, most ships have some unique capability. The ANS Small Beginnings is configured with two Mark 62 twin barrel 120mm cannons and a 16 cell vertical missile launcher. I'm unlocking your weapon systems now, so let's put gunnery to the test with some tried and true naval fire. There are several ways to target weapons. The fastest and simplest is by shooting directly at the sensor track. To do this, right click the red sensor track to bring up the action menu in track mode. The action menu will indicate it is in track mode by displaying the targets and track number in the space. It will automatically open the weapons list if there are any weapons on the ship. The active targeting mode is shown at the top of the list. Right now we are in track mode indicated by TRK. We'll talk about other modes later. Select the cannons from the weapon list and light up the target. Solution locked in. Definitely seeing some hits there. Looking good. If the guns can't hit a target, the ship will automatically roll itself to get currently active weapon on angle on the target. This is called unmasking. Right now you'll notice that our fire is pretty inaccurate. This is because our targeting solution isn't using a fire control lock. The red dot jumping around near the track shows where our sensors think the target is. Receiving. Let's improve our targeting accuracy by locking the target with our bullseye fire control radar, located on the top of the ship. To do this, right-click the track and select the LCK, or lock, at the top of the action menu. You can also use the X key keyboard shortcut. On the target. Notice the new icon on the target. This indicates that the target is locked on and is providing much better accuracy and increased update rate on the target. Remember, not all ships have fire control radar, and you'll only be able to get a lock with ships that have them equipped. Right now we are shooting armor piercing, AP, shells at the target. Armor piercing is effective on armor plating, but will only deal damage to internal components directly in the shell's path once it punctures the hull. While any damage is a good thing, we can deal even more damage by switching the shell type to high explosive, dealing damage to a wide area in the target's internals. We use high explosive, HE shells, against targets of appropriate size or smaller, or larger targets with heavy armor damage. HE shells cause much less damage to armor, but penetration will explode inside and do damage to all nearby components and personnel. To switch to HE shells, first open the action menu in track mode by right-clicking the track.
orders. In the weapons list, next to the cannons entry, click on the ammunition icon to open the ammunition list. Click the 120mm HE shell option to select it. The ammo switch is now pending and will only be executed if a new fire order is given. To begin firing the new ammo type, click the weapon group to confirm the ammunition change. Yeah, we've got him now. Yeah, we've got Now we'll select the small beginnings and watch what it's up to. The mounts display shows the ship's cannons are firing and cycling. When the yellow bar is filled, the cannon will fire again. We can also see that the fire control's radar is solid green, indicating it's active and it has an active lock-on. Here's the active orders list, showing an icon for each order the ship is currently executing. Right now we have an order to fire our guns and an order to lock the target. Have the small beginnings hold fire and break their lock on by right clicking on the order icons to cancel them. And that's the basics of gunnery. The key thing is to know what ammunition to use, especially as your target takes more damage to warrant the big stuff. But what if you don't have a sensor track? Take a look at your ship's hulls and you'll notice the four white octagons on the sides. These are radar panels and provide coverage for their respective sector of space. There's also a central control module inside the ship which tracks what these panels see. When panels are damaged or destroyed, you'll lose coverage in that area. Similarly, if the radar controller is destroyed, you'll lose all coverage in all directions. Obviously, fighting blind is not a good thing. But that won't put you out of the fight just yet. Direct fire weapons like cannons can fall back on visual targeting, where the crew will provide targeting data to your guns using onboard optics. Some weapons like missiles can't do this, however. I've ordered your crew to disable the radar. Take a moment and observe what happens. You don't want the first time you're operating without radar to be the real deal. With sensors disabled, you will now see visual contacts when you have one of your ships selected, and nothing when no ship is selected. Visual contacts are only useful to the ship that actually sees the target, unlike the sensor track, which was shared across all ships. If you don't see anything, you'll need to move within visual range, about 3200 meters. I've created a marker in the general area for your reference. That won't happen in actual battle. You can fire on visual contacts the same way you did with the sensor tracks. Use visual targeting to fire at the target ship with the small beginnings guns again. Force laid in. Positioning. Aye, aye, full burn. Solution locked in. In a situation like this, you can imagine things are not going too well for you, but you'll at least still be a threat, so don't feel too cut up if your sensors go dark. Orders. Thrust. Nice. 
Knock him out. Now missiles. The ships in this fleet carry two variants of the SGM-2 series anti-ship cruise missiles, the Thunderhead and the Hurricane. The Hurricane is a command-guided missile, which means it is guided to the target by a launching ship. If it misses the target, it will come back around and try again until it runs out of fuel, is shot down, or finally hits the target. Command missiles are very difficult to avoid. The only way to defeat them without destroying the missile itself is by destroying the launching ship or jamming its sensors or communication. Shoot the archer, as we say. The downside is that the hurricane must be shot at a sensor track. If you lose a track, the hurricane will be useless. Let's launch three hurricane missiles at the target. Start by opening the action menu in track mode on the target. Now select the SGM-225 Hurricane with the weapons list. This will queue up a single missile shot at the target and leave you with an active track selection widget. Multiple missiles can be fired with a single order using the left alt key. Hold the left alt key and click on the target to add one more missile per click. The number of queued missiles is shown next to your mouse cursor. To issue the order, you can either click the left mouse button with the left alt key released, or you can press the enter key. So once you've issued a launch order, you'll notice the mount status display will show the number of missiles that are being spun up for a launch. It takes time between when the target is selected and when the missile actually leaves the ship. This warm-up time is when the weapons control system brings the missile online, checks it for errors, establishes a reference frame for the IMU, uploads the target package, and more. Programming time varies by missile type, with more complicated missiles taking more time. The number of missiles that can be warmed up and programmed at the same time is referred to the ship's maximum salvo size, and it varies from ship to ship based on its configuration. These two frigates each have four channels, so four missiles can be fired at a time. Missiles are one of your most limited and precious resources, second only to the ships themselves. They are extremely powerful, but extremely scarce. You'll need to know when to use them, as it can't be replenished under normal circumstances outside of a port. A frigate like the Reigns will be crippled by only two or three missile hits, but in a real fight, it will often take more than that to penetrate an enemy's point defense, which are a serious threat to hurricanes as they tend to fly in a direct path. The ANS Dusty Tome is carrying a different missile loadout. Select the ship now so we can take a look at it. This frigate is carrying Thunderheads, an active radar-guided missile, which means it carries its own method for finding targets, allowing it to seek targets by itself. It can be targeted in the same way as the Hurricane missiles, but once it has left the tube, it's entirely autonomous. When it reaches the end of its path, it will activate its onboard seeker and begin searching for a target. The greatest benefit of active missiles is that they can be sent on complex waypoint paths, allowing for multi-angle strikes and even hitting targets behind asteroids. But we'll cover that when you get to your advanced missile trials. For now, let's just fire three Thunderhead missiles at the target as we did before with the Hurricanes. As easy as it is to use active radar missiles, there are some downsides to their operation. The first is that the missile must find a target within the cone of its seeker in order to track and kill it. This makes evasive maneuvers such as course changes an easy way to defeat active missiles fired at long range, especially against fast moving targets. The second shortcoming is that active seekers are easy to decoy with chaff and other countermeasures, meaning more missiles need to be used in order to score a hit as active missile radars are particularly sensitive to jamming and decoys. But that should do it for your weapons trial. 
I'll have Fleet Logistics retrieve the dummy ship, and I recommend looking into all the weapons when you get your chance. I'll see you at the Academy.